Hi, I'm Celine Daly and I'm a dermatology nurse specialist working in Sligo University Hospital and I was on my pad this morning talking about melanoma. Melanoma skin cancer, it's the most serious form of skin cancer that we have and there's a campaign by Melanoma UK this year which is entitled Conquering Denial, Ensuring Skin Cancer is Treatable, Not Terminal. That means being sun smart, preventing sunburning by using or wearing a bra brim hat, sunglasses, sunscreen, seeing the shape between 11 and 2 and then being aware of your skin examine your skin frequently and regularly and um, uh, you know just anything you develop any new lesions lumps or bumps um, go to your GP immediately have them have a look at your skin and just to make sure that there's nothing else new or different there don't be ashamed if you go to your GP and it's nothing that's brilliant I often get people into the clinic who are almost apologising they don't have skin cancer that's not a problem we don't we don't want people to be leaving it so late that they develop skin cancer that's advanced we want people to come in um, while they develop new lesions so we can have a look at it for them. There was a question that came in um, when we were on air as well I didn't get the chance to answer it um, it was from a caller who said that they live on their own would it be worth going to a dermatologist to have their skin checked and I think actually it's a great idea um, just make sure that you're going to a, a good dermatologist so um, again uh, we have all the hospitals around St Vincent's St James's um, the Masher we have Saigo Galway Waterford um, Limerick um, Drogheda um, and again go to your GP who can advise you or refer you to a hospital based consultant dermatologist they're very good private dermatologists again who are board certified who can see you and examine your skin not everyone needs all their moles cut off we don't do that anymore in the 70s and 80s people used to go and just get all the moles cut off to think it might prevent getting skin cancer but actually moles you have will rarely develop into skin cancer it's moles develop over the age of 35 so go to somebody who's good don't go to somebody who's just going to take photographs and send you on your way go to a proper as I call them a proper dermatologist who can examine your skin properly and advise you in the best way possible okay so we've got the question Okay, so the first one that's come in is hi Celine I keep getting bad dry scalp and I've tried everything any help appreciated uh, we were talking about common questions that comes in and this is a really common question as well. Dry scalp is awful and if you ever get it, it can actually set off an entire body dermatitis or eczema because it's your, your your nerve endings on your scalp are many and when your scalp is dry and you scratch, you itch and you scratch a bit more, it becomes drier. It can be super irritating. It actually can distract you at work and keep you awake at night time. If your scalp is very dry, um, the best thing to do is to go to your GP who can prescribe a topical steroid for this. Don't worry about using topical steroid in your scalp. It actually encourages hair growth it doesn't it doesn't thin out the scalp because the scalp is quite tough and thick the skin on the scalp so a topical steroid for a few days just to bring down the inflammation that's there use a shampoo that has no parabens or perfume I really find when I use shampoo that's the normal let's call it if you squeeze the bottle and it smells beautiful that kind of shampoo encourages dry flaky scalp as well often people get a condition called what is dandruff and then they get spark dermatitis of the face as well, which is dandruff of the face basically so using a shampoo that's medicated that's meant to be used for dry scaly scalp is a good idea as well and um, there's one called Selsun there's one of my favourites called Capacil now it doesn't smell beautiful at all it actually kind of stinks a little bit but it is fantastic at clearing dry scalp the most important point however on using medicated shampoo is when you put on for example the Capacil on your hair uh, work it up Leave it in contact for five minutes. Don't touch that scalp for five minutes. So when you're in the shower standing for five minutes, that feels like an awful long time. But leave it in contact for five minutes, then rinse it out. Um, Use just conditioner on the ends. Don't use conditioner on the scalp itself. And keep using the Capacil until it settles down. So the best plan is to use something like Capacil to start with. If it doesn't calm down, go to your GP for a steroid application, which you can use until the scalp settles down. And then maintain with something like Elav shampoo that doesn't contain any parabens or preservative. And it won't flake up or flake up that bark dermatitis dandruffy condition again so I hope that helps Okay, so this comes in from Laura. So my dad has been diagnosed with psoriasis on his hands and feet. The hand treatment was Dermavate and an emulsifying ointment for two weeks. Currently his hands are very tender, sore and cracked. Is there anything else he could try? 
Um, it, this is a uh, palmar plantar psoriasis or hand and foot psoriasis and actually it's one of the most difficult forms of psoriasis to treat so we have chronic plaque psoriasis there's the typical big plaques of psoriasis all over the body we have something called gouted psoriasis which are little drops like little dots of psoriasis all over the body often you get it in teenage years when you get a sore throat and it can be the first presentation of psoriasis and then you have this palmar plantar psoriasis um, so it just maintains on the hands and the feet the question I have for Laura is does her dad smoke so if her dad smokes try to get them to stop because people who smoke tend to have worse hand and foot psoriasis um, so certainly if he does smoke to try and give them up definitely it's a difficult one to treat the first thing we do is topical treatments but again I would wonder has he gone to a consultant dermatologist a hospital based consultant dermatologist usually people with hand and foot psoriasis it's debilitating his hands are sore it wouldn't be from the dermavit per se it's from the inflammation that's going on at the moment we have to use our hands to do our work and our feet to bring us places so if the skin is broken, inflamed and irritated, that can be really debilitating. So I would if you haven't gone already, go to the GP and ask to be referred urgently to your local hospital-based consultant dermatologist. This probably needs a systemic medication as we call it. So Light, we sometimes treat hand and foot stories with a particular light. It's mixed success, but often patients have to go on an oral medication for their psoriasis or an injectable medication for this uh, severe form of psoriasis. And uh, these injectable biologic drugs now have been licensed for psoriasis in dermatology since 2014. They can be only given by a hospital-based consultant dermatologist. So your primary care practitioner cannot give you these drugs. They have to be monitored and you have to have baseline bloods done and a few other bits and pieces. But certainly it's definitely worth going to a GP and, and saying, look, we need to go to our dermatologist, see the local one as soon as possible. If you want more information, psoriasis or where your local hospital is, you can go onto the Irish Skin Foundation website. That's irishskin.ie. There's a free helpline number there where you can talk to a dermatology nurse specialist and they can advise you on your local centre. So I highly recommend you do that. Also good information, psoriasis on that website as well. Okay, so another question has come in. So I've never suffered with any skin condition before, but last month I got an itchy rash on my elbow. It kind of looks like eczema, but I'm 28. And as I said, I've never suffered with anything like that before. When I Googled the rash, it says that it's a rash associated with celiacs, but I'm not a celiac either. Any... And you know, the next thing I'm going to say is don't Google rashes. It's the worst thing. It's a wonder it didn't say something like you have um, TB or something like that, because it tends to bring you. That's the problem with dermatology. And that's why we I'm always asking people to come in and see their GP to be referred to see their dermatologist, because it's a very specialized um, um, uh, part of medicine. And, you know, it's not that easy with rashes. And um, certainly the rash of celiac disease tends to come on both arms. So you'll have kind of almost like a bubbly rash on both arms when you have celiac disease. If it's isolated to one elbow, it could be as simple as if you're working in an office and you're leaning on one part of the chair, for example, and uh, it's causing friction, it could be causing friction to your elbow. If you had a history of asthma, eczema, hay fever or allergic rhinitis in you or your family, it could be a form of eczema. The first thing to do is to try using a moisturiser and even maybe some hydrocortisone over the counter regularly. So try to stay with the hydrocortisone and using a total ammonium therapy. So ELAV have a total ammonium therapy solution with shampoo, conditioner, body wash, moisturiser, everything. So you can use that to wash with and to moisturise with and try the hydrocortisone twice a day. And if it doesn't go away, go to your GP for diagnosis. But an isolated rash in the elbow doesn't sound like it's anything serious and it doesn't sound like it's this, again, the celiac um, disease you're speaking of. But get the total ammonium therapy solution and try hydrocortisone for a couple of days. If it doesn't go away, go to your GP and he can have a look at it for you. Okay, so this comes in from Ronan. So would a moisturiser with SPF 15 built in be enough for an overcast summer's day? It's a great question, actually. It's not. So I don't do anything under a 30. 30 or 50. So an overcast day means that 80% of the rays are coming through the cloud anyway. So even on a cloudy day, 80% of the rays come through and you can suffer from UV damage, both UVA and UVB damage. So a moisturiser with a 15, you may not burn, but certainly you're going to be absorbing those UVA rays. So anything below a 30 is not adequate enough, even in Ireland. So as I say to Pat, it's the 1st of March until the end of September every single day. And as I said, I left Sligo this morning and I mean, the wipers are going full belt and I'm up the road and it's just beautiful so Irish weather you cannot trust so you must wear your sunscreen your hat your sunglasses and stay in the shape between 11 to every day between March and September and that's my rule my severe rule it sounds like but my rule but when it comes to sunscreen it has to be a 30 now if you get a 
good sunscreen it'll act like a moisturiser anyway um, the one thing you don't want to do is ghost out I know Elav have an SPF a new SPF that they bought out that's a 50 that is non-whiting it's non-rolling so if you ever use sunscreen it kind of rolls between the tips of your fingers um, it doesn't do that La Roche-Posay have the Antilles range which is really good Bioderma have an excellent um, factor of 50s as well that's no parabens preservative and it's they're not white looking they won't make you look like Casper and um, Aven have a range of factor 50s as well so it's a big choice go into your local pharmacy I know Care Plus Pharmacy do all the, all the ranges across the board at that chain so if you go into Care Plus Pharmacy uh, for example and ask for some samples so try a few samples before you buy it and when you find something like buy it and use it right up to the end of September Okay, so the last question comes in from Kira. So, hi, do you have any tips for managing hydrodentus supervita? Oh, it's a it's a real tongue twister. This hydrodentus supertiva, yeah. So it's called HS for short. Thank God, because it can. It took me about six months to get get it. I have to say, of all the skin conditions that come into the clinic, it's the one that would pull at your heartstrings. It's absolutely debilitating for people who have this thing called HS. So HS is also called acne inversa. So it's a cousin of acne. Um, it's grid in something called hurdy stages. And it can it tends to affect under the breasts, um, in the axilla or in the armpits and in the groin area. These are where these sebaceous or greasy glands are plentiful. Um, it can be mild. So you can have like a few almost like acne cysts in these areas. It can be moderate to severe then where you get huge cysts that burst and they almost leave holes behind your channels. Um, and uh, patients with severe HS can't work. Uh, they, 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 try, they, they can't even maintain relationships. Um, it, it's painful. Um, they have to use dressings that don't work all the time and change them frequently. Um, and it can be really, really distressing. So the first thing we do, the, the interesting thing about HS is it can take between five and seven years to diagnose somebody with HS. Patients present with, um, again, pustules or, you know, large kind of um, lesions. They might go to ED and they burst them or lance them and then they send them home with antibiotics and that's it. And they don't get a follow up. And again, they kind of get uh, fallen between the, 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 the stools. So um, if you do have like pustules or acne like lesions under your arms, under your breasts and in your groins, Go to your GP and ask to be seen by a dermatologist. They'll diagnose you with HS. First of all, if you smoke and you have HS, stop smoking. That's easier said than done, but please um, ring the Quit Helpline, which is a free HSE service to anybody who can ring to try and assist them in quitting smoking. Um, there's loads of reasons to quit smoking. I'm talking about a lot today, but certainly in HS, it will make a huge difference to you if you quit the smoking. The other thing that can be really difficult for people as well is to lose weight. So if you tend to be overweight or obese, um, losing weight will really help this HS um, as well. Now, there are people with HS that don't smoke and uh, are a normal weight um, and it's just it's something that's going on with these kind of glands that are acting up basically. So in dermatology we used to just prescribe antibiotics and topical antibiotic roll-ons and just dressings and packs and all that kind of stuff. The great news is now that people are going biological treatments again this biological drug that we spoke about with psoriasis it's been used to treat people with HS and it seems to be working, which is really, really good news. And again, it's only in the last few years that this has actually started happening. If you have HS, you must be under the care of dermatologists because, again, dermatologists can, are the only people that can prescribe these drugs for you safely and effectively. So you must go to your GP and ask for a referral to a hospital based consultant dermatologist. I know there's some great HS resources on the Irish Skin Foundation website, irishskin.ie. Um, there's, uh, I, I seen, I think it was a HS Awareness last week and there was a great uh, um, um, uh, stuff on Twitter and Facebook. So there's great uh, social media um, groups that you can join as well to get support. Um, but at the very baseline, if you smoke, stop it. If you're overweight, talk to your GP or your dietitian about trying to, to bring the weight down. And then you must be seen by a hospital-based consultant dermatologist who can diagnose you and treat you properly for this terrible disease and anyone with HS deserves a huge amount of sympathy because whenever my patients come in with that my heart literally breaks for them I think it's it's very debilitating and it's very embarrassing and uh, certainly don't sit at home with this uh, worrying and thinking about it get down to your GP and get your GP to send that referral in for you so thank, they were great questions again thank you